Hello and welcome back to the INI Builds Ground School. We are today again sitting on the apron at East Midlands Airport with the A300-600 on the line. So it's been a while since the last part but what we're going to focus on today is the FMS and the reason for this delay is we've all been focused here on the 1.04 update. So the version today we'll be showing you is the current version of the aircraft, the 1.04 and just before we start this FMS tutorial we're just going to go over some of the differences that you'll see from the older version of this aircraft in terms of how you operate it. So let's get straight into the flight deck. Okay, so you join me here looking at the tablet. Not much has changed here. Um, a few things have been renamed. So you can see it's called an air start unit. Previously it was called an air conditioning unit. I can understand why that created a little bit of confusion because it was purely for air starting the aircraft. So we renamed it to an air start unit. So I'm just gonna deselect that now. I'm also just gonna deselect the fuel truck uh, the loader and the air stairs so once we're ready to go we can get moving a little bit faster primarily on the EFB things have remained roughly the same looking across the aircraft um, really in terms of what we're going to talk about today not a vast majority has changed but I just recommend that you have a look at the change log that we published so let's get straight into the FMS so for the FMS on the A300 I think it needs a little bit of a background on what it is what you can expect it to do and where the philosophy of the designers came from. That sounds like quite a lot so let's get into it. Okay in this view here you can see both FMS's in the aircraft and let's just talk about the history behind them and what they're capable of doing. So they are quite an old design and they don't really fall in line with many things that you would have used before the best way to think of these is they are like an early A320 FMS but also kind of like a 767 but also kind of like an MD-11 it's a bit of a hodgepodge mess so Honeywell Sperry they sort of share the same sort of names when you look around were the people that manufactured the FMS and still manufacture the FMSs for the Air, for Airbus now along with a few other third-party manufacturers because Airbus do not build these themselves they tell them what they want in them but they don't build them themselves because they're just simply well not too complicated they could do them themselves but from a cost perspective it, it makes more sense for them to just let a third party do that and that's what they did exactly in the A300 so you can see the main differences from earlier modern aircraft types, I know we're going to say that <laughs> about a million times once again but we're still going to say it, is it's green. So like a 737 and a 747 there's no colours. So this is the, I would actually, yeah this is the only Airbus family aircraft with an FMS that doesn't use the standard green, blue, magenta sort of colour combination. This is just all green. You're not going to see any other colour other than green. And that's fine, but it makes it a little bit harder to understand what's going on and a little bit harder to sort of see how this is similar to a, an Airbus normal FMS. But it is in many ways, but it also is different. The theme of the whole A300, I believe. It's similar, but not quite, but different. <laughs> so next, let's talk about the capabilities of these FMSs. So we now know that they're kind of a made by someone for Airbus but kind of like a Boeing but also kind of like an Airbus which is the whole theme of this aircraft but they are quite limited so not just down to the FMS but primarily down to everything that surrounds it in terms of the flight control computers and the signal generator units you can't draw curves on the flight plan so it's just straight lines which is quite you can tell it's quite an early aircraft that it doesn't really draw the curve and also the main crippling part of these FMS's and it's why you often do not see them even in modern A300's now they've been replaced is they struggle to store waypoints and you think well that sounds pretty stupid why would the, an FMS struggle to store waypoints that's kind of what they're built for it is but think back to this system so the whole avionics package that we're looking at here for the A300-600 was, 
designed on the A310, which came out just slightly earlier than the A300-600. And that was in 1982. It was released. So they were building this system in well in the 70s, mid, mid to late 70s they were designing this. Now in the mid to late 70s, there weren't that many waypoints. I mean, there were waypoints, but nowhere near the amount of waypoints that we have today. You know, there were no RNAV arrivals, there were no RNAV departures, there just simply wasn't as many airways, there weren't as many airports, there just wasn't as much of everything. So when they designed the system, they designed it to the best of their abilities and what they thought would be needed, but frankly, it's it, it, in the modern era, it doesn't really work. So one of the largest operators of the A300 is FedEx. And they operate a fleet, I believe, of 52 A300s. And they actually still, to this day, use the exact FMS that we're looking at right here. Now, why a lot of operators, such as DHL and many other operators, have removed these FMSs and have put a more modern one in? And you can see them, they kind of, like if I move my cursor here, they're kind of like a half height one. They look like, uh, if you're familiar with a Dash 8, they kind of look like a Dash 8 FMS. And that gives them more capabilities. But, but let's get back to the point of what capabilities and why would they spend all this money to replace them if these ones work okay. It all comes down to the navigation databases. So for a FedEx flight, it can only store enough waypoints for you know flying around the US. And sometimes I, I, I do believe it can't even fit all of the waypoints that are in North America. In. So if it wants to fly to somewhere else in North America, you have to change the entire database to a new one because it needs to have two or three of them because, like I said, it can't fit all the, de all the waypoints in. And that takes 45 minutes for an engineer to do on the ground, which massively increases the amount of time that the aircraft has to be on the ground. And you have to pay the engineer to come and do it. You have to wait for them to do it. You have to make that it works. And then they have to depart and oh, it creates a nightmare. So this is why the this style of FMS is slowly but surely being removed from service. Um, a lot of operators still use them and they work perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just the main reason is the fact they can't hold that many waypoints. Now, we could have simulated that on the INI Builds A300, but quite frankly, I think that would have become extremely frustrating. Um, it's, it's frustrating for real world operators right now. It's frustrating for real world pilots and it would be just a step too far in sort of realism as such to, for us to do that. So we didn't. It, it uses the default X-Plane database and it, it, you can have the whole world navigate database in there as, as you can with any other aircraft. There are multiple other aircraft that also can't hold the whole world database that do in the sim. It's, it's not something that we're skipping. It's, it's not done in the sim just because it's just Think of it this way, you know, you've done your flight in America and you fancy flying out of Japan and you have to wait 45 minutes to reload a database that doesn't really exist. We decided against it. So let's get back to the FMS itself and how to set it up and some of more of its shortfalls. So what are some more of its shortfalls of this FMS? Like I say, waypoints, it can only hold 94 waypoints in a flight plan. So if you have more than 94 waypoints in the real FMS, it just, it goes, I don't know, I can't do that. <laughs> it goes, I, I don't know, it just can't hold it in its memory. And it actually has 512 kilobytes of memory. Not megabytes, not gigabytes, kilobytes. That's not even, I don't even know, it's, it's like five seconds of a song or a very, very, very low quality image. <laughs> That's it. That's all it's got. It, it can't hold any more than that. And um, as we pointed out with Airline to Sim, Ben, go check out his videos. He did some fantastic videos with a real world A300 pilot who said they used to joke that the memory, the, f the Furby, the small soft toy, the little one from the 90s, that had more memory than an A300. <laughs> so it's, uh, your smartphone is about one million times more powerful than these FMSs. So, now we've talked about what are the issues with these FMSs. They can't hold many waypoints. They can't hold enough for even a flight around the US. They are slow and they are reasonably limited in what they can do. So a lot of operators are replacing them. 
So what have we simulated in terms of the issues that these have? In the INI builds, you have a worldwide database. You are not limited by the amount of waypoints you can put in your flight plan. Again, we could have done that, but we chose not to because it, it, it simply would be, it, it's very, it would be very frustrating, uh, let's put it that way, because the issue is if you're following some real world routes who, of the operators that use the more modern FMS, you wouldn't even be able to load the entire route in and I, I frankly would not find that very fun so that's not simulated and also the slow we have a delay on each page and the FMS is kind of feels feels slow the real one is even slower and we could have again made it even slower but frankly it gets to a point where it's actually quite annoying to use so we've kind of bridged a middle ground between realism a delay and also making it feel authentic. So that's where we are. Let's move into the FMS now. Okay, before we get into the FMS itself, I wanna quickly talk about click spots and the CRT screen effect that we've gone for. So we have seen some users saying that they find using the click spots quite difficult on the FMS. We're obviously looking into that uh, at this time to see if there's see anything else that we can do. But I wanna give a little bit of background of why it's difficult on this aircraft as opposed to other aircraft because we've had a few people say well how come I can use it perfectly fine on my other aircraft but on this one it's quite difficult there is a reason and I'll explain it now so as you can see the glass is curved or well the glass is straight around the edge here and the screen is curved underneath so that means that the buttons depending on the angle that you look at don't always exactly line up with where you're looking. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if we look at where it says cruise flight level 100, if you bring your cursor across, it doesn't really line up with this button, and this one doesn't really line up with that button. That's because we're looking at it at an angle, and it becomes reasonably difficult to, to press the buttons in this view, and you can do it, it's fine, but what we recommend is to look at the FMS a view like this. So now, if we're looking at the view like this, now can you see how the cruise flight level 100 seems to line up, and it is the right button. Obviously, I just clicked it, so it's a format error, but you can see that the buttons are lining up with kind of where I want to click, and that all makes sense now. So if you look at it from top down, the perspective of where the screen is and where the buttons are lines up, and it makes it quite a bit easier to not mistype in. Another tip for you, if you look, so let's say I want to type in a cost index 25, 25. Now rather than look here and click there, which obviously would work fine, look at the button, not where it is. So this is this, and then aim to click here, and it will go in fine. Now obviously this is something that we, we want to try and change or try and look at if you really think hey actually I don't want it to be super duper mega realistic with the little curves and then all this sort of stuff but it's something we're looking at but this is a if you look at it from top down you shouldn't have any problems at all even at any kind of angle it's fine it's just to be aware that inadvertently putting the wrong thing in can be a little bit easier than other FMS's so welcome to the main section of the lesson this is where we're going to talk about the FMS and where are we going to start well Let's start all the way at the beginning on the reference page. So reference page. Now this is kind of like the data page on the A320. It's kind of like your main menu for the other items in the aircraft. Okay. So as we talked about before, this is not an SOP lesson. We're not going to go over the SOPs, but we're going to go over the systems. So let's start on the bottom left, move up will come down on the other side. Echo status. Okay, so what is this? So we're looking at this, and this is something that fairly regularly you would look at as a pilot on the line. We're in an A300-600. Engine type, CF6, that makes sense. I have my database. It's obviously not the most in-date database. That's because of me, not because of the sim or the aircraft. It's just I don't have the most latest AREC data, which is fine. And we have the performance factor. Now, you might, I've heard a few people saying, oh, I can't edit the performance factor, that's unrealistic. You cannot edit the performance factor in the A300 because as you can see, there's no little section up here. So 
normally in a A320 aircraft you type arm and then it allows this section to be edited you can't do that here we initially had that so you could and we were told um, that no the perf factor is not editable but it is by an engineer not by a pilot so that's why when you try and type something in like 2.0 not allowed and that is by design it is not an error on our part we'll talk about this now because we're here but you can see you have an active and a second database this is a really neat little trick so if you've like programmed the FMS and you're halfway through anything my goodness I've made a real mess of this I need to start again and I just want to start again you can do that and this is this is what they do on the real aircraft you can swap databases so if I click on this one see the database has been swapped and it blanks the FMS entirely okay so you get the message database swapped and now if I had stuff typed in then it would blank so let's just show that so if I go Echo Golf Lima Lima which obviously not where we are to Echo Golf uh, Kilo Kilo all right so you can see that's in there I think oh no I, I want to start again Echo status swap blanked see and the FMS gets blanked neat little trick um, not why is it would work on the real aircraft because how it works on the real aircraft is you have two databases obviously in X-Plane and in flight simulation you only have the one that you're using so that's why the dates are the same but that's just a limitation of the flight sim but we modeled it still I think that's quite cool so let's move on sensor status uh, it's an operative page effectively what this page is it's just about sensors that are inside the FMS like temperature of the FMS it, it, it's not modeled Closest airports, um, quite a useful, uh, quite useful. It's basically what you think. It's the closest airports to where we are, and it gives you a distance, it gives you a bearing, and that's it. Useful when you're trying to work out a diversion. You think, ah, oh, what are the closest airports? Closest airports, and it tells you what they are. But other than that, not really much else to say about that page. GPS. So the GPS position. Um, I, you can see here on the page gives you all the little bit of a readout of it uh, the ground speed the GPS altitude your track and the information that's coming from the GPS 1 GPS 2 receivers position monitor so you can see here this is looking at what the FMC 1 FMC 2 radio mix IRS IRS 1 IRS 2 IRS 3 are all looking at what does that mean well, each FMC or FMS, I know we're getting our sort of words all mixed around here, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. I think we all know what we're all talking about. They're all calculating their own position. The radio is the um, basically the conventional navigation aids are calculating their position, and they mix them together to end up with the mix IRS position. IRS 1, IRS 2, and IRS 3. As you can see, they've got slightly different values because they're not quite as accurate as each other so 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and they get mixed together to create the sort of narrow accuracy that we see and we will look more at that after we look at the IRS alignment procedure but this is just here uh, to show you for now and select GPS is another thing altogether freeze freezes it so you're doing transatlantic you can tell your position but we're not going to be using that today predictive GPS in operative page what it does in the actual aircraft and why it's not that useful for us is in the real life if you're flying to an airport that has a GPS approach you want to see if when you arrive if the satellites are going to be in position so that you can have enough accuracy from the GPS system to do that approach well in the sim there are no satellites there is no accuracy downgrade and there is no outages of the satellites because they don't exist um, so um, it's not really the most useful system in the world in the sim because it's more of a what happens if in the real world predictive so predictively looking at the future is my GPS system going to break no yes etc etc so realistically in the sim you could model it but frankly I don't think many users would a use it and b you're making the system fail to make it seem like it's realistic which doesn't really seem to make sense to me. ACARS 
something we're going to look at in the future to do more with but at the moment uh, once you have your route in you click win request and it will pick up the wins from inside your sim currently not with active sky uh, we are working with active sky to try and bring active sky integration to both the adis request and the win information here so you just can simply click win request but we'll do this later once we have a route in because at the moment it doesn't know what wins to get so i can click return or you can click ref we'll come back but I've like I say, this isn't going to be the most every single step of how an FMS works. It's how this FMS works. If you don't know how an FMS works, this might be a little bit too quick for you, but still, maybe you can follow along. Maintenance. This is just for the maintenance team. So in enunciator tests, we have the enunciator lights that come on. Message, offset, uh, display, and fail. We can cancel that. We have a test pattern. Uh, this is basically just showing that all of the letters and numbers and whatnot can display correctly on the FMS. The key test, so press line select key four left. One, two, three, four, yeah, etc. etc. To get out of that you press ref. <laughs> Trust me, I got stuck in that the first time I did that test. <laughs> so anyway. IRS monitor, it's kind of similar to the other page, remember, where we're looking at the IR drift rate and it's ground speed showing zero makes sense because uh, it's on the ground and the database is shown there nothing else on the maintenance page not really anything you can do just little things we've included that are nice in there so reference page realistically what are you going to use it for when you fly it if you've really messed up the program in the FMS and you want to start again you can swap the database using the aircraft status page and a cars the wind if you want to once you have the route in so everything else isn't isn't really used. As you can see, AIDS is greyed out. It's not a system that we have and it's not something that a pilot would use. It stands for the Aircraft Integrated Data System. Bit of a poor choice of words for an acronym. <laughs> um, not making light of the situation, but it, it is a bit of a poor choice of acronym, but still, um, it's what Airbus use. They still use it to this day. If you look on the A320 family, it has an AIDS push button and an AIDS system, but it doesn't do anything for the pilot. It's simply the aircraft says, oh, this part broke and this part broke, and it integrates, so aircraft integrated data system. So when something breaks, it basically tells it for the maintenance team. So in the sim, it has no function at all. And we didn't func make it work because it, a real pilot, you're not even allowed to go into that page. So it's great. It's there, but grayed out for that reason. So, let's move on. Now, uh, we're going to kind of go, not, not from top left and work our way through these pages in a systematic thing. We're going to kind of do it as you would program the FMS. Once again, I will say, this is not an SOP lesson. So, you might say, hey, hang on, I was told by X, Y, and Z that you program in this order. Sure, you could be absolutely right, but we're just going through it as what the FMS is, and how it works. So, init page. What does it do for us? And why do we care about it? So, in this page, you're telling the aircraft, I'm going from here to here, and you're going to tell it all the other information that it needs to know. So, we're going from to, and this is also called in Airbus terms, the city pair. So, why they call it the from slash to and then in other word documentation they call it the city pair and you might not be flying from one city to another anyway that's for some guy into Toulouse to work out why they did that but <laughs> for now we'll call it the uh, the city pair from that one so we're going from echo golf november x-ray to now i know i said we were going to fly to london gatwick airport small change we're going to fly to london luton airport because I have some nicer scenery for it. <laughs> That's the only reason why. No other reason, no, not that there's anything wrong with Gatwick, but we're gonna fly to Luton. And also, um, a DHL A300 often fly into Luton. So it's actually somewhere you will see an A300 is Luton Airport. And it's pretty cool to show that it's a, it's a wide body flying into a pretty small airport, really. But it's all doable in the A300, so. The identifier for London Luton Airport is Echo Golf, Golf whiskey, and I put this in. Now we're presented with none and return. It is up to you. You can click none and it will take you back. You can click return 
it will take you back. Why is it showing none? Why is it showing return? Well, if you've used, let's say, SimBrief to build your flight plan, and you've downloaded your X-Plane flight plan format and put it into, I believe it is, resources, output, flight plans. So this isn't something that we've done. This is a standard X-Plane feature. If that's in there and you type in Echo Golf November X-Ray to Echo Golf Golf Whiskey, enter, and it sees in that folder a flight from East Midlands to Luton, it will now ask you on the top left, hey, do you want to insert that route? And you can click yes. Rather than none, it will have the flight populated in there. So let me try that now. Okay, so as you can see now, this is what you would be presented with, something that looks like this. So rather than none, it's, it's presenting you the entire flight. This isn't obviously the same flight that we're doing now. You can see this is Amsterdam Gatwick. It's just a flight that I knew I had a flight plan for it's a nice short flight so what are we looking at here it's saying Amsterdam direct Idrid and then on the Lima 980 airway Abned via the Zulu 344 Mirov Quebec 63 etc 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 it's basically the entire route and you can just click on the bottom left insert bang and the whole route will go into your FMS this is effectively like using a company route as such or uplinking the route um, via a cars so this is the way that you do it in the INI A300 you leave it in that folder you type in the city pair you can click insert and your whole route will be inserted already obviously minus a sit and a star because that's not how it works in the real aircraft so let's go back to where we had not put a flight plan in because we're going to do it all manually we're back here again so now like I say none or return I like to click return and we're back on this page so Let's move top left to bottom right. Alternate routing, again, you can type in um, your alternate routing if you want there, but I'm going to do it manually. Your latitude, your longitude. If you line select this, you end up with an arrow that you can slew. At the moment, this system is not functional. We want to make it functional, but at the moment, it is not. So if you see, you get these little arrows up and down, which you move with these arrows, but as you can see, it does not move the latitude and longitude. But like I say, we want to try and make that a feature in the long run. Cost index, we're going to go with, well, let's stick with 25, but I'll, I'll go 26 so you can see how it inserts. Like this, so 26, and it goes in, and then we can clear it like this, and it clears it. So, so I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Cruise flight level, uh, it's a short flight today, so it's going to be up, climbing up to flight level 2. One zero, and as you can see there's that pause when the screen goes black that's because of that limited processing power it can't render the screen as it goes along so it's something that we've simulated flight ID this is where you put your flight number in so we're going to be the INI A300 let's call it FMS 1 format error I think that's rather appropriate why don't we just call it INI a300 there you go I think it was just a bit too long for what I tried to do before alternate so this is where we type our alternate is we'll use Gatwick as an alternate and once again this is where it asks you if you had a flight plan in there that had a routing an alternate routing remember from uh, Luton to Gatwick it would say hey do you want to insert it here you go no 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 I don't want to insert it here it's fine so we're just going to click turn so now we're pretty much all ready to go on this page. You can put the cruise winds in here. Now normally on the flight plan it shows you like an average wind. It's always written somewhere. And if you have an average wind figure, you can type in the wind of say 220 slash 5, something like that. And that will go in there. If you try and clear it, then it will clear out. Tropopause, um, you cannot edit this in the A300, unlike the A320 family. You can't edit it. Um, it's, it's always a static figure. Why they display something that's a static figure to you, that's a question for someone in Toulouse. I really don't know why they choose to do that, but that's up to them. So we've done the init A page, and now we're going to move on to the flight plan page. So review before we move on. You put the city pair in. 
you put the alternate in, you put the Costanix in, you put your cruise level in, you don't have to, but you can put your flight ID in, you don't have to, but you can put your cruise winds in, and that's it. It's pretty simple, like many other FMSs. So, here we are looking at the flight plan page. Now, this is where it starts to look kind of like an A320, kind of, but also kind of like a Boeing. So, like I say, we've got no colours here, but we can see we've got East Mids, and then we have a discontinuity, and then we have London Luton, and then we have an end of a flight plan, and then we have London Gatwick Airport, end of alternate flight plan. So let's break this down. What is it trying to show us? So here is where we're departing. Here is where we're arriving. It doesn't know how to get in between here and there. It's saying that is the end of the flight plan. So it going in my mind, this is where the flight will end, which is good, always good when it ends at where you want to arrive at. But it's saying, but I understand you might want to divert to Gatwick, Echo Golf Kilo Kilo, and that is the end of my alternate flight plan. So this is your flight plan, this is your alternate flight plan. So they are separate, but they're displayed on the same page. And that's why it says, end of flight plan, end of alternate flight plan. I think that's fairly, it makes sense, right? So, how do we put a SID in? How do we put a STAR in? How do we put a routing in? Okay, now I should talk about this. I almost didn't talk about this because uh, I'm so used to it, but it is pretty dumb, if I'm honest. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Huh? This is a question for all of you. If I wanna go down the page, which button do I press? Do I click the down button or the up button? Ooh, thinking, thinking. Ooh, you're wrong. You click the up button. Or maybe you said the up button and then you're right. Well done. You've flown an Airbus before. So you click the up arrow, watch this, to make the page go down. <laughs> it's, if you've ever seen someone who's never used a smartphone before, they actually often try and scroll the wrong way and Airbus's philosophy at the time, they even have these diagrams in the FCOM, is it's like a barrel that you rotate and you would rotate the barrel forward which would mean that the message would go down. To be honest, I don't really know what they were thinking because it's a bit mental to press an up arrow and the page go down, whatever, it's the way it works. <laughs> it's, the, it's the wrong way around to be honest but just so you're aware, you click the up arrow and the page goes down. You click the down arrow and the page goes up. So look, down, up to the top, up arrow, down to the down. And you can see that we have the DSPY message. That's because the top waypoint is not the current waypoint. So it's basically saying, hey, what you're displaying is not what is actually where we're at effectively, if that makes sense. So let's keep scrolling, 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 scrolling. So now we can see that we've got that SID loaded in got a discontinuity and then we have an arrival and now we have some stuff populating here because it's saying we think we're going to arrive at this time etc etc because it has some information so let's put our star in so again click on it and we haven't got as many options as before because our latch revision is basically a star and that's it or enable alternate you wouldn't want to do that that would truly mess the entire flight plan up but we'll talk about that later so star Again, fairly conventional system. We can choose our runway and we can choose our star. So today we're going to be landing on ILS 126 and that now filters the arrivals. So we can now scroll. Now, again, well done. I can hear you saying, oh, I need to scroll down for my stars. How do I do that? Well, you click the other way around arrow. So we click the arrow up to go down and we are scrolling through all of the different stars. Look, it keep going, it keep going, it keep going. I'll keep going until we get to the end. So there's a fair few, and you can scroll quite quickly like this, and then you can see you've come to the end when they kind of end like this. There's no indication of what page you're on, like a Boeing, it's just that's what you have. And it's the same thing for the different arrivals. If I deselect this and scroll, you can see all the different types of arrivals. Like I said, Please select the runway first and then select the star. It will cause issues with loading into the aircraft otherwise if you don't do that. So, okay, so we're going to have a look at what star we're going to use now. So, we're going to go today for the Ava 1 Lima. 
Avan. I'm not actually sure how you pronounce that. I think it's Avan One Lima, something like that. It doesn't really matter. Like I say, this is where you can see there's still a little bit of a, they call it the parallax effects actually, where the screen and all this sort of stuff, it, you just look at the button next to it and then it always works. See, I collected the right one. Now, what has this given us this time that was different from last time? So it said, selected, runway 26, selected the arrival, what transits are available for the star, none, for the ILS, quite a few. Abbott, ASCII, Casey, Laurel, keep scrolling, and that's it, okay? So there's, if you have an arrival transition, this is where you would select it, and then you would click insert, okay? So, kind of makes sense. It's, it, it is a reasonably logical system. So we have the star on the left selected, we have the ILS on the right, it shows you which transitions are available for the star, none, which transitions are available for the ILS, these ones, you select them, you click insert, bingo you have it all in there and that's it so in this case we don't want any arrival transition we want the star we want this insert okay good so now we have our basic routing put in so let's go and have a look what that looks like in through the fms so we're going from east mids runway 27 and we have a discontinuity makes sense between trent and here we can see we have the little so this is where it shows you the SID and this is where it shows you the star so you can actually see what star we're on it's drawn there all the way along you can see all the restrictions are drawn in here you can see our VNAV profile is already calculated our time is already calculated here and it has all of the arrivals what do these triangles mean we'll come to that in a second and then we have Gatwick Airport at the end with no routing so let's say that we want to put our alternate routing in how do we do that click on there lateral revision from london gatwick star we're going to do the ils 26 left again don't get confused this is a different airport and we are going to do i would think something like the well let's do an unusual one so the tebra one golf again it asks us what transitions do we want we don't want any and then we can click insert so now what we've got is at the end of our flight plan, flight plan discontinuity, and then we have the arrival star and the arrival runway into Gatwick, which is part of our alternate flight plan, remember? And then there's a discontinuity at the end of the missed approach from Gatwick, and that's the actual end of our alternate flight plan. So now what we've got in there is we have a SID, a star, an alternate arrival with a star and an ILS. So it's pretty good really, pretty simple, not no most complicated thing in the world. If you're familiar with a 320, that should have been pretty straightforward. If you're a Boeing person, then it's a bit different. But that's actually not because of the A300, that's just because of the way Airbus do it. The whole scrolling thing is, I don't know, weird. So, now we've got to work out how we're going to get from Trent to Avant. Now, I want to try and keep this lesson reasonably simple. So we are not going to talk about it too much, but let's have a look. So think about it. We need to get from Trent to Avant. So how are we going to do that? Think about it, maybe? Yeah. We need to do a lateral revision. It wouldn't make any sense to do a vertical revision, would it? Because well, what could we do? We could tell it we need to be high, low, etc., etc. It doesn't really make any sense. But I want to, from here, so a lateral revision from Tango November Tango. Okay, and there's lots of different things shown on the screen now. Okay, so this is where it starts to get quite complicated with the Airbus. So, hold, we could hold a Tango November Tango. We could enter an airway. We could put a new waypoint. We could enable the alternate. We could return. Return would be great at the end of our problem, but no, <laughs> just kidding. That's not actually going to help us, is it? So, what do these mean? Co-route has no function in the INA 300 It's like a company route, but a company route from this waypoint wouldn't really make sense. New route two. Now, this is mainly used if you're in flight. So it's basically, you can say, if you're in flight and we're flying towards Tango November Tango, imagine we're there, we're in the cruise, whatever, or it doesn't really matter, we don't have to be in the cruise, we could just be climbing away. And we get a call from the back 
all oh, right, it's a cargo aircraft, I know, but the, one of the people that sit back there could say, we've got a fire. Um, there's, a, there's a severe fire in the cargo hold. Uh, we need to land now. You're like, oh, okay, we need to land immediately. And let's just imagine we're quite far away now from East Mids Airport and Birmingham Airport is nearest to us. Okay, so we're nearer Birmingham than we are to East Mids. So the quickest way to do it would be like, right, okay, we're heading towards Tango November Tango. Let's go from there and let's go to Birmingham. So what you would type is Echo Golf Bravo Bravo. This is Birmingham's identifier, okay? Birmingham Airport in the United Kingdom. Click that there. Now, let's have a look at our flight. Okay, so now let's have a look at our flight plan. So it's put a discontinuity in. There already was a discontinuity there, but if there wasn't, it would have put one in. And it now realizes that we want to change where we're arriving. So if we scroll through, it's got all the other stuff left in there. Okay, but look, our arrival airport is Birmingham, okay? So we can go on star. Okay, so we could pick a star. Let's just, obviously if you're on fire, you wouldn't want to be flying much of a star, but it's just for an example. So we've got that in there. So let's have a look. All right, we've got the Chase 2 Delta. Ampit, A-M-P-I-T. All right, okay. So what we can do now is what we can say is we want to go from Tango November Tango to that waypoint. There's two or three different ways of doing this. Number one, which is, to be honest, it's quite a clean way of doing it. So let's talk about it. We could clear all of the waypoints manually. Delete, you know, delete, 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 all of these different ones until we're left with this. It takes a while. It is clear. It, it, it makes sense when you're doing it because you know what you're clearing, but it, 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 it's messy, okay? You can click on here and see where it says new waypoint you could type in a m p i oops sorry i t you could type that in here and it will go from there to the new waypoint which is there i mean it's useful i don't use it i use this now this is the easiest way for me as i scroll down and i go okay i want to go i want to go from where i currently am to this point so i type it out and i can copy the spelling so you can be sure it's the right waypoint. Scroll, 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 scroll. And you can put it here. Okay, so you're saying I want to go from here to here. Done. So now let's have a look. So now it goes Tango November Tango. Amp it. Straight onto the arrival and onto the ILS. It deleted everything that was in between there. It went, I don't need you anymore. I want to go from here to there. Everything else is irrelevant. And it throws it out of the flight plan. Okay, so let's talk about that. So what did we do just then? We did quite a few little things. We said, no, I don't want to go to where I'm going anymore. I want to go to Birmingham. Right, okay. So then we went to scroll the correct direction. I just screwed it up, as you saw. So we said, right, I want to do a lateral revision. New route to Birmingham. Type that in. Right. Now, let's make an arrival. So I chose an arrival run when I chose a star. Okay, now let's clean the flight plan up. We went, right, we have a discontinuity between here and here. How are we going to get from Tango November Tango, which is where we're going to, to the new airport? We went, right, Ampit is the first point on the arrival. Typed it in. And then we line select keyed over the discontinuity. Now, it doesn't have to be discontinuity. It can be any waypoint. So now let's, let's show an example of that. So we want to go from Tango November Tango to Crew. Okay? We don't want to go via any of these waypoints. We don't want to go via amp it or knock it. So, like we said before, I could click clear, and I could clear this one, and I could clear that one. Okay, So I could manually clear them. I could click on here and type new waypoint as crew, or I could do this. C-R-E-W-E. And it asks me, which crew do you mean? Because there's multiple ones in the database. Now, an, a flight simism, I guess you want to call it, is you will be presented with more options than you would in the real A300. Because remember we said that normally your database is only valid for like one small part of the world. This is asking me, which which one do you, which crew? Do you, want to, do you want the crew that's near to you? 
or do you want the one that's at this la longitude and latitude and that's like a long long way away and it wouldn't ask you because it wouldn't have in the database but it can see there's multiple ones so it wants us to confirm it so now we're going tango november tango crew and that's it see so now it's all working i hope that wasn't too confusing but i brought it up because that's very very useful if you do a missed approach and you want to come back to the airport you left from or you want to go to a different airport that functionality is great and it's quite complicated and it took us quite a while to get it working correctly um, so just thought I'd show it off so now it's all a bit of a mess right the flight plan how do we solve this we we haven't departure and arrived into Birmingham I don't want to go to Birmingham anymore I want to go want to go back to where we said we were going to go all right it's fine this is how robust the FMS is in the A300 Click back on it. Think about it. How are we going to do this? How are we going to achieve this? Yes, we're going to use the new route two. Golf, golf, whiskey, bingo. All right, let's have a look. Has it gone in? Yes, we have the arrival. Star. We said, remember, ILS 26. We said it was this arrival. Insert. That's all in there. So let's look at the first point on the arrival, it's Avant. So let's do it like this, we want to go from Tango November Tango to Avant. Avant. Avant, it's asking us which Avant, this one or this one, this one obviously. Bingo, all done, back to as it was. So we just used all the different methods that you can use for clearing waypoints, skipping waypoints and redoing your flight plan. This, I might add, is exactly the same as the A320. The only difference is it's not called New Route 2, it's called New Dest. So, oops, if I listen to myself, it would help sometimes, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I want to do a lateral revision, so it's the left side. It, this isn't called New Route 2 on the A320, it's called New Dest. Same exact functionality. Other than it's not, it's drawn a bit better because on the A320 it's not drawn as Echo Golf Number X8 forward slash this because I've seen people trying to use this functionality in typing like this. I think it's not going to work because you don't have to type the forward slash; you just have to type the identifier in. Yeah. So, okay. So now, a little bit of a longer explanation of how to do it. But now we've seen how to put a SID, how to put a star, how to change the destination on route how to change the SID and the star, and how to put an alternate star and an ILS in. Pretty good, right? We're getting there, we're getting there, okay? So, let's go back to the flight plan page. All right, so this is all looking good in the flight plan. We've got everything in there, uh, and I said I would explain what these little triangles mean that are filled in. Well, they mean overfly. What does that mean? Well, some waypoints on some arrivals require you to fly over the top of them rather than cut inside of them and unfortunately in the A300 there is no way to tell it to do an overfly now on modern Airbus types there's a little button down here somewhere and it's this literally this this triangle symbol and you can click it like imagine this little minus was this and you could click it next to a waypoint and then it would make it an overfly you can't do that in the A300 it's either an overfly from the database or you you're out of luck there's nothing else you can do so it either is in there or it isn't in there and it has some other logic in the aircraft that if it's beyond a certain amount of degrees or you've gone direct to a certain type of waypoint it will overfly and come back but it won't tell you it just it just does it um, it's a little bit it's not as clear to understand what's going on I would say but we've got our route in and let's move on to the next page so now we're on the secondary flight plan page they call it secondary index don't ask me why. They call the button secondary flight plan secondary index. Anyway, like I say, someone in Toulouse, give them a phone call. No, I'm just kidding. They made a beautiful plane because it's just so complicated. Um, I want to take just a few minutes to talk about that. The FMS here it is very complicated um, to model, and the whole aircraft is very complicated. There's a lot of users that are using the aircraft and really enjoying it, and there are some users that are using it and finding that there are a few mistakes, and we are correcting them as we go along. But I would just like to say that this is an incredibly complicated airplane in all regards. Flight controls, hydraulics, electrics, FMS, auto flight. It's very, 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 very complicated. And I hope these videos will show that 
we haven't really skipped much. We've really done everything that you need to use and it does work. And hopefully these videos will kind of give you that insight of how to use them because there's a lot of functionality there to use. So back on track. What is this? How do we use it? Why do we care? So it's a secondary flight plan. A lot of people don't bother using it. I can see why, to be honest, in the flight sim world, it doesn't particularly have that much use, um, but it's still cool. So what can we do? Well, there's a few cool things you can do. So you've got the from slash to, the city pair. You can build an entirely different flight in here. So if we were being cheeky, right? Now this is pretty cool. I should mention this actually. You know, you can be quite cheeky with this. You can say, you know, when we land in Loot and we've got that other flight to, uh, let's just make a Amsterdam, right? I don't want to program it in. I can't be bothered. I'll do it now while I'm sitting on the ground. I don't know why I've got time there, but not time later. You know, okay. So you can go Echo Golf Golf Whiskey 2. So you have to use the slash, remember? See, it's kind of showing you what it wants. It wants the information, the brackets, the slash, and this. Echo Hotel Alpha Mike. So this is the identifier for Amsterdam. Put that in. Return. So now it's going, okay. I want a bit more information. What's your cruise level? All right, 210 would be my cruise level. And he goes, all right, okay, I need a bit more information. Uh, you can click on the fuel prediction. So this page is a bit weird. Uh, it, you can't really edit much on it. In the real aircraft as well, like it, it shows you the CFG. If you try and type it in, so we'll try and type it in. Oops, 30.0, just a random figure. It says not allowed. You can't edit it, but it shows you that it needs it. Don't ask me why, that's the way it works in the real airplane, it's very odd. Uh, but it basically, I think it's more of a confirmation page, but uh, it's there. It doesn't really do much in the real aircraft either. Uh, but what the, the main one is, you can go on secondary flight plan. So now we can see we've got Gatwick. Oh, I'll get there eventually. Not Gatwick, Luton. There's too many airports around the London area. <laughs> From Luton to Amsterdam. And it's showing us, remember, departure, arrival, discontinuity, end of flight plan. All right, so we're going to go off runway 26. We're going to use the match to Yankee. Remember, line these up. And I'm going to go insert. And you can see I have the match to Yankee departure in there now. And for the arrival, I'm going to land on uh, 118 right. And can you see that there's a pause there, like a longer pause? It's quite cool. So we modeled that in the real aircraft, the bigger the database, the longer it pauses. And we actually modeled that where it pauses for a bit longer if it's at a complex airport because it's having to scan the database with that 512 kilobytes of RAM. So we're going to do the red for 1 alpha. Remember, line it up. Red for 1 alpha. Insert. And we can. This discontinuity, remember we said either we could type in red fa like this, put it there, and it will do it. Or we can click on here, type new waypoint, or we can just clear the discontinuity. So now we actually have our entire next flight in there from here to here. Okay? So when we're in the air, we could activate this. Don't recommend it, because <laughs> it's going to get very confused, because it's going to go, why the hell am I like 120 miles away from where I'm supposed to depart from and I'm in the air? So don't recommend click and activate secondary. But you can, and I could do that now. And it has a few cases that mean it will and won't activate. If you're in NAV, so NAV on the FMS, remember NAV on the FMA, we're in NAV, and we have a common waypoint. What does that mean? Okay, let's imagine both of these flight plans, first waypoint here, so the waypoint that it's going to was Tango November Tango. Okay. Then it would go, all right, I know how to get from Tango November Tango to the rest of the flight. And it would allow you to activate the secondary flight plan. You could click activate, it would activate. And it would keep flying to Tango November Tango, then it would and it would route wherever it needed to go. Okay? If it doesn't have a common waypoint, which is the case at the moment, it will not allow you to activate the secondary flight plan. We're on the ground at the moment, so that doesn't count. But if you were in the air, this activate secondary would not be there. The, the, little, the little text wouldn't be there. It would be missing. So what you have to do 
is you have to go into heading, then you can activate the secondary, then you can go direct to somewhere on the secondary flight plan, and then you can put it back into nav. It's exactly the same as the A320. No difference there at all. It works exactly the same way. If it has a common waypoint, you can activate it. If it does not have a common waypoint, you cannot activate it, etc., etc., etc. So, that works exactly the same way. Uh, just something to be aware of. That you have to either be in heading or have a common waypoint. But in this case, we're not going to have a common waypoint. Now, this shows you the detail that we went into. So, if you if we landed, remember I said, oh cool, we've already done our flight for the uh, for the next leg. Hmm. Have we though? Because what will happen is the FMS on landing below a certain fuel flow value, according to the FCOM, will blank itself. It will delete the information in the in, in the entire primary and secondary flight plan in preparation for your next flight. So if we were trying to be Mr. Smartass here, we would actually land and boom, our flight would get deleted, which is not what we want. There is a caveat to that. If your waypoint shares a common waypoint, remember like before, it will not be deleted because it sees, hang on, hang on, hang on, they need to go, these, these flight plans are connected. So if it shares a common waypoint, it won't be it won't be deleted when you land. Uh, but if it doesn't, it will. So doing this whole thing of setting up another flight, it's not really it's not really that feasible, and it's not really that usable. So not many people would use it in the sim, and not many people would use it in the real world. So let's just clear the secondary flight plan. So now it's completely cleared, and we're black back to where we were before. What it's normally used for is you can copy the active flight plan well and that's kind of done what you'd think is it's just copied it it's now a copy of what we have in the f in the primary so blah 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 blah. you can see all the way along here we have everything that we'd have in the primary flight plan as a backup in case we have an fms failure or we lose some waypoints or we want to do a fuel check and all this sort of stuff because it will display the old waypoints if we get direct to somewhere then you have it as a backup there same thing for when you want to activate it exactly the same sort of things that you're useful for is changing runways in the air so actually just like the real aircraft the FMS pilot handbook guide for the A300 recommends that you actually if you have a runway change that you don't do this you don't go blah 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 click on the airport click on the star change the runway it recommends you use the secondary flight plan actually to do it and then activate it because it's more stable as it describes it. Uh, you don't have to do that because we didn't model it that, it that it requires that but it is a more stable way of doing it for sure actually. Um, so remember if we're going to loot like this secondary blah 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 blah, blah let's go all the way to the big deer we can go on star remember let's select a different runway uh, let's select uh, the same arrival click insert so now we actually have a different runway in there. See, we've got runway 08 rather than runway 26. So if we're in the air and we get near somewhere and they say, oh, it's actually runway 08, we can just go activate secondary flight plan, bang, done. No need to mess around with it, we're all ready to go. You can even put a different star in there and activate it, bingo, ready to go. So it's kind of useful for if you're flying somewhere where you think you might get a runway change, you can just put all the information in there, boom, click secondary flight plan, activate it in the way that we said, and you'll be good to go. So that's a bit of an overview of the secondary flight plan. We're just going to clear it. We don't really need it for today's flight, um, but that's that's what it's there for. Fully modelled, all works, um, which is great. So where are we going to go next? We are going to go back to the init page, and we're going to quickly switch to the overhead view. Now. Well, here we are on the overhead view. This feels familiar. Feels like I'm about two episodes ago. We were talking about all these different complexities of these systems, but what are we going to talk about now? Well, we're going to talk about the IRSs again. So, a lot of people ask questions on this, and I can understand why, because it isn't the most... Uh, it's not the most obvious system in the world, it's not the most intuitive system in the world, but uh, it works the correct way. So we're going to turn on the IRSs, so we're going to go nav, nav, nav. Okay, so you can see now we have align mode, align mode, align mode. Okay, so they're in a line. Now, this is called the ISDU, the IRS Display Unit. 
this whole thing I should say, not just this little bit. This is a keypad. Um, you can manually input uh, Latin long using this, but it is, it's not it's not modelled. I mean, you can type it if you want, uh, but it's not modelled that you can put your own Latin long in using this in the INIA 300. Okay, the keypad's modelled, the animations are modelled, but the functionality of putting in a way uh, a, a position using this is not modelled because we have GPS primary and we have IRS simulation already there, so there should be no need for that. So again, sidebar, I want to talk about this for a little bit, it's not inherently linked to the tutorial. A lot of people are saying, hey, I want to put in my position using this and it's really bad that you didn't model it. Okay, let's talk about why would you want to do that? Why would you want to slew the position that's on the FMS as we showed before that also isn't modeled? The reason you would want to do that is when GPS is not primary so that you need to manually input the most accurate latitude and longitude that the aircraft has by looking at the charts. But this aircraft is fitted with GPS and GPS is primary because as I said satellites in the flight sim world don't fall out of the sky and they don't stop working because it's GPS it always works just like to be honest the real world I don't think I've ever had GPS not work it just works <laughs> I mean sure it can get jammed and then that's but we're getting into kind of a bit of an obscure territory there that we need to model GPS jamming when it doesn't really jam but etc etc so you really have no need to enter your position you just need to be aware that you need to align and you want to make sure that GPS is primary. This aircraft is fitted with GPS, it will align correctly and the GPS will become the primary source mixed with the IRS position. So there is no need to put in your waypoint via this and there is no need to do it via the slewing functionality. That is why we did not model it. For the online operation it is not needed and in many, 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 many other air aircraft in X-Plane, P3D, FS2020, that system is not modelled at all as well. So I think it's pretty unfair if you point the finger at us saying you should have done that. In many other aircraft it's not. In older aircraft, like um, aircraft that use the, they don't use an IRS, they use an INS, then of course it's needed, okay? Because it's your primary navigation source. You do not have GPS. So it is needed and it is modeled by the developers. Fantastic. So back on track to where we were, <laughs> back to the keypad. So it, like I say, you can type stuff in, it's not going to do anything, but just to be aware, you can. We thought it would be cool that you could still type the buttons, but it's not going to do anything for you. So I've just put it on heading status. Now, what does this mean? So it's that number eight is eight minutes. So it's saying it's eight minutes till it's going to be aligned. So this is how you see how long you have. On the modern aircraft, Airbus family aircraft, it says on the ECAM screen or the EWD at the top, it says eight minutes left to align, less than six minutes, blah, blah, blah. On here, this is where you see how long you have left. This is also where you see error messages. So if I release the parking brake now and had the engines running and started moving around, the IRS alignment is going to stop because it can't. It needs the aircraft to be st still stationary when it's aligning. And you will get an error code 53, which means excessive movement. So all the error messages are programmed, and that's where you'll see them. So if you see a number in there, like 8, 10, 5, 4, whatever, that obviously makes sense. But if you see something like 52 or 53, that's an error message. And I guess the best place would be to reach out to be asked for support on why that's happening. I mean, it, if you just are stationary and, and align it, it, it shouldn't happen. But it's obviously something that the system isn't happy with. So what is this? This, this is display for System 1, System 2, System 3. So it's looking at this. And you can turn the, the display off by doing that. Makes sense. Test just puts a test pattern across the whole thing. Track shows our track. P pulse shows our current position. It doesn't know our current position yet because it's not aligned. Wind shows the wind. Do believe that's not supposed to be shown on the ground. It's something that we are looking at reviewing. Heading and status again shows you the status. Eight minutes left to align. And you can see it says align mode. Now I can't remember, I believe it's ten minutes or five minutes. There's some sort of time value. These will start to flash after a while if you haven't pressed and I'm going to call it the magic button <laughs> okay the magic button so what is the magic button so a lot of people get to this stage when they're using the aircraft and they go well, why isn't it aligning you haven't pressed the magic button let's talk about the magic button